And we're going to start with question one. Question one is actually a book static. So I can't really go through this one because it's basically going to give you the answers to it. Sometimes I forget to look for that, so this one does. This one, all you're doing is going through the transactions, as you can see. And you're going to identify the category of the statement of cash flows in each of the transactions will be reported. So, either finance activity, investing, non-cash, investing in finance, or operating. Remember this. Finance activity only goes after anything with cash, dealing with a finance activity like bonds, debt finance, notes, bonds, or common stock, dividends, any of those. Investing only really goes after fixed assets. So if I see land, buildings, equipment, any of those, that should immediately tell you it's investing. So it's either going to fall for D3 either into the investing activity or investing in finance. Investing activity should have cash involved. So if you don't see cash, then it's going to fall into this. On cash investing and financing activity. Then anything that doesn't fall into D3 is Pretty much going to be operating. So, for example, one do a. See, I got cash. So, cash and common stock. So, I know anything that's dealing with stock, that's equity, that's a finance activity. So, I want to select finance and then check my answer. Okay. And then we'll go to B. I'll be go forward. E is a fun one. So E right there, that's probably going to be operating. Because that's done with depreciation. So that one's a fun one right there. Again, you have four options. So four options with three tries. You're bound to get it. All it's done in your favor. Yes, I'll leave that. All right. So question two. We'll go through this one. All right. So does have a split of statements. So there's our comparative balance sheet. We'll go through that. And then here's our income statement. So this is the first one that we're going to tackle. All right, so complete the statement one section at a time. So we're going to go through cash flow statement again, beginning with cash flows from operating. Use a minus sign of parentheses on the amount that result in decreasing cash. If a box is not used in the statement, leave it empty. Do not select the label or enter a zero. Okay. So as we go. So first off, that income was fifty six thousand. Okay. Remember from this, we only take out really two main items. I don't have any gains or losses, so no worries there. But we do have depreciation. Remember, depreciation is one that always goes. So, as you can see, it gives you a nice little tire title here. But we're going to find, actually, it's not giving us depreciation on this one. On one, the other one should have depreciation. There's depreciation. I just missed it here. Oh, there it is. I didn't miss it. My bad. And sometimes it's hard to see what the drop down list. But there's our depreciation. And remember, 
Appreciation is always at that. Okay. That's just the income statement. Don't need any more. Next, we go over here. All right. So, as I'm seeing this, A, B, C, B, and E, notice this. Acquisition of current assets. Of this amount, 100000 was paid in cash and fourteen by note. So that's actually a dual item there. That's our fun one. That's our classic. But that's not dealing with operating. Cash receipts from sell land. That's not dealing with operating. Cash receipts from common stock. Again, none of these are dealing with operating, so we don't have to worry about those. We're just going to focus on the balance sheet now. And again, we're going to look for current assets, which we have two, contributable and merchandise inventory. So again, we need to find the difference. So, from 20... From 2017 to 2018, we have an overall decrease in accounts receivable. So that's decrease in accounts receivable. Remember, we do the opposite. So if you just did like I did in the calculator, take your recent year minus your previous year, it shows up as negative, you put it in your problem as a positive. Do the opposite for the current asset. When you ask us, we'll do that. Next, merchandise inventory. Again, I gotta go back and forth because of how try and keep all these windows. We have ninety six thousand minus ninety one thousand. We have an increase of five grand. It's positive, since this is an asset, we go opposite, it's on negative. Okay. Keep all it coming. There we go. Alright, so there's our two current assets. Let's find any current liabilities. We have two also, an account payable and crude. Notice, they already call them just payable long term. So we don't have to worry about those. Again, for these, remember, we actually follow what happened. So for accounts payable, 35,000 minus 19,000 is 16 grand. Notice it's an increase. So, find our increase in accounts payable, and that's actually going to be added back in, 15 grand. And then we look at accrued, which was 15,018 minus our prior year, 28,000, and we had an increase of 13,000. Decrease the accrued liability. That's the liability. Keep it the same. So there we go. Nothing more, nothing less. And as you can see, there is a couple of blanks, or one blank. This will be Actually, that will not be a total. Don't worry about that. So, this just gives you two blanks here. So, calculator, we'll add these up. 26,000 plus 15, minus 5, plus 16,000, minus 13,000. So, grand total of 37,000. So 56,000 plus 37,000. It 
equals 93,000. Okay. Go ahead and check. And everything's good. Alright. So, here we go. Net cash flow from investing activity. So, I'm going to look up here. First thing, we have acquisition of plant access is 114000 Of this amount, 100 is paid in cash. So, notice this. Since we know it's paid, cash has decreased. So, the cash payment for acquiring plant assets. Make sure we put this as a negative. Okay. Right. Let's see if there's another asset going on. Yep, right here, there's land. So, cash received, or receipt, from the sale of land is 22000 So, we gain money. So, cash receipt from the sale of land of 22000 And then the rest are finance activities, so that's it. One hundred thousand. So we have overall a loss of seventy thousand. Check. We're good. We move on to the next subject. So finance activity. So now watch out here. Because again. This was paid for a note payable, so that part, even though it's finance, this part is finance and investing. It's a trick there, so don't add that one. Well, I'm looking for cash. So cash receipts for issuing common stock. That's one. So of course, that's an increase. Next. Payment of note payable. Since they're not saying that we paid it with something else, we assume that's a cash. So, cash payment of note payable. Again, that will be a decrease because cash is going down. And then, last one is cash payment of dividends. So, another decrease of 8000 So overall, we're looking at a actual positive cash flow of nine grand. Okay. All right. So here's the last section. Again, see as it's separated the non-cash investing activities. So all we're doing now is focusing on cash. So the net increase or decrease would take the operating minus that loss in investing. Then add in that extra money we receive for financing or at twenty four thousand. Cash balance at the beginning. You look at 17 prior year plus 6,000. You add these two together, it would come out to 30K, which is exactly what my ending cash is. It matches. We are good. We know we're good also because, again, this goes step by step. I'm checking your work, but it's always good to just double check. Now, non-cash 
Remember, we do have this note payable. That will then a non-cash item. So as you can see, even in the explanation, there's an investing, an asset, and a finance item. So that was then the 14000 There is nothing else. That's the only item. So 14000 Check. And there we go. That is it of this problem. Just a long-winded uh, cash flow statement. Question number three. <clears throat> Looks like we just are focusing on the non-cash investing in finance activities. So identify any non-cash transactions that occur during the year and show how they would report how far it's gone. So we need to click the information, get our documents. So watch out. We're only going to be looking at stuff that does not go after cash. Okay. So A, issued 1,000 shares of $4 par common stock for cash of 22,000. Since this is using cash, this is not part of this section. I will not focus on that. So we're not going to use it. B. Issue 5,500 shares of $4 car common stock for building with a fair market value of 95000 Okay? So, this is acquisition of a building by issuing stock. And we issued out basically for 95,000. What it is. We can calculate by one, two, four times 55,000. But basically we, when we acquire those, it's going to be for the market value. Okay. C. Purchase new truck. For the fair market value of 28000 finance it 100% with a long-term note. So again, you can see we have a fixed asset and a note. So, finance and investing. There's our explanation. And 28000 Okay. E, retired short-term note of 26000 by issuing out shares. Okay, again, we don't see any cash involved. So, there's a payment of short-term note from Campbell by issuing common stock. And this is a loss of 26000 Actually, it should all be a game. 26,000. Uh, I have to remember that. All right. Check our notes, because we didn't have that going on. All of a sudden, we think it. Nope. There you go. I remember no, I was still positive. Yay. All right. E, a long-term note of 12500 to the Bank of Tallahassee. Then issue a new long-term note of 26000 to the Bank of Trust. Okay, so that's payment plus cash. And that's just cash coming in for a long-term note. So. Both of those are cash items, so they don't work. So, 
he's gonna own three. Yeah, even if you look down at the drop menu, you see three that say cash anyway. So we know we weren't going to use those. So take our calculator, add these. Equals 149k. And check. And we're done. That's it of question three. Nothing big going on there. Just watch out. Since this is non-cash investing in that finance, if it has anything to do with cash, I'm not going to use it in this section. In separate schedule. Four is our good old free cash flows. So, This is a course they actually show that there's abbreviation. So we're going to look at net cash provided by operating activity. So that's NCOA minus our cash payments from any investment minus our cash dividends. Usually always how it goes for free cash flow. I can actually look at this statement. So, net cash provided by operating activities is 188500 Then we're going to subtract, again, cash payments for planned investments. So, we plan to purchase a truck and a forklift. So 32,000 plus 122,000. That's 154k. Right there. And then it plans to pay out cash dividends of 5,000. So our free cash flows. 88,500 minus 154. Minus the 5,000, I have 29,500. So for free cash flows, it's probably the easiest formula that we've had. As long as you remember those three items, you're good. And it's all about future. So we plan to do this, we plan to do that. And we take it from whatever operating activities we have. Oh, I have two zeros there. I need an extra zero. There we go. Okay. So that's question four. Already wrapped up. Yeah, we're almost already done with the homework. So question five. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, a lot of transactions going on. Okay. Okay, so we're going to actually prepare all financial statements. So the purpose of a statement on cash flows is to show where cash came from and how cash was spent during the period. Always how it is. So first off, you can see these are not overly complicated uh, statements. We're going to be very quick, very simple, and we're going to basically just find our common stock. Not common stock, our income statement during our first. So we need revenue. So January first. That's common stock. So Early in January, we made cash payment. None of that's going to help that balance sheet. Um, okay, again, nothing there. P is the cash payable. So that's balance sheet. Uh, during 2018, here we go. We sold 
2,900 units of merchandise and imported for $200 each. Okay. For four year in, the company collected 80% of this amount. Half the goods sold for the year is, was 260000 in a year inventory. Okay. So really, we care for revenue. Is this $200? So we sold 29000 times 200. So we made $580,000. Okay, not bad. Okay, we did see cost of the sold, which is income statement item, was $260,000. So these are big ones. That's going to be our income statement starting point. I'm not worried about merchandise inventory since that's a balance sheet item. D. E, the store employs three people. The combined annual payroll is 80000 of which ORRC still owes two grand at the year end. And okay. here, we just care about payroll or income statement. And again, that's our expense. Thousand. At the year end, in the year, ORC paid income tax of twenty three thousand. There was no income tax payable. So F is income tax expense for the twenty three thousand. Uh, they pay cash dividends. That's a balance sheet item. We don't deal with that. For source pictures, they use straight line depreciation. So we have to do straight line. Five years with no value. Oh, this is bringing in everything we've learned. This is this one workout problem. Thanks. So, store pictures, we bought for 45000 5,000. And since this is a year ended, we're going to basically use the whole year as depreciation. So since there's no salvage value, so 45,000, we divide by 5. This shows depreciation expense be 9 grand. Again, using our depreciation formula for straight line, which is always the cost of the item minus salvage value, our residual value, however term that they use, is zero, divided by the Y. So we'll have depreciation expense of 9,000. Okay, here's all of our expenses. So let's pull them up. And again, if you have any questions while I'm going through, put it in the chat and I'll go back over it. So our total expense is 372000 I do not know if they want me to put this as a negative. I won't put it as a negative for the sake of it. If it tells me it's wrong, we'll just make it positive. So, take our income. As we all know, the formula for income statement is revenue minus expense. So we're left with a net income of 208. Oh, I missed an extent on phone two. Let's 
Sure. Oh, I did. I just totally, like, skipped this whole thing. I did skip one. You skipped out 11,000 per minute. Hopefully that's a one-time payment. That should have been 83. And decrease by 208. This is what happens when you go fast. 580 minus 383,197. Check. There we go. Okay. So that's always nice. Love it when we have multiple opportunities in case you just happen to overlook one. Like I just said. So. It happens, you just correct it and move on. So, here we go, we've got the balance sheet. So again, we'll go through each one, and basically fill in the balance sheet as we go. But most of these affect the balance sheet. The so first one, we issued no car common stock for 475000 we know common stock is part of equity. So there's our 40, 475,000. Next, we made the following cash payments. Now I'm going to go through each one and we're going to change up the totals if we need to. So 45,000 for store fixtures. That's, of course, a Party plan in fixtures item, so 45,000. Okay. Uh, next, merchandise inventory, that's a current asset. So, we do know we have cash. Somewhere around here, they had to have cash for something. So, that's going to be a mystery number. And then it's not stable, so we're going to put merchandise inventory as the last one. We're going to keep it with 330000 for right now. There we go. And then expense on the store building. Um, that was completely income statement, so no worries there. Later in the year, we purchased merchandise inventory on account for two hundred and forty four thousand. Before year end we paid a hundred and forty four. So this is our start of merchandise. We bought more. So plus additional two forty four thousand. So five hundred and seventy four thousand. Okay. So now it's in there. We also did on account. So sounds payable. Did go up two hundred and forty four thousand. Minus 144,000, because we did pay that. And we're sitting at 100K. Okay. So we're going to keep going. That's C. D. We sold 2,900 units of merchandise inventory for $200 each. For the year end, we collected 80% of this amount. Okay? Here, that's that 580. So, 580 times 0.2 is the amount that we have not collected. 
So we still have 116,000 left to collect, or basically less than accounts receivable. Again, we expect to receive this money. And that's why I'm putting in accounts receivable. All right. Notice this, I'm not touching cash account yet. I haven't touched it yet, even though we do have cash moving. Uh, I can easily find out what the cash number is without constantly updating it as we go. You don't find out. It's a little trick. All right. So, during this, again, Ending merchandise inventory total 314,000. So they actually tell us now the actual ending amount. So 314,000. Here we hired our employees 80,000. We still owe 2,000. So we have a salary payable of 2,000. Okay. And both current, no income tax payable. We paid cash dividend of forty thousand, and we do have to look at that. So right now, paying earnings is always we had no beginning this is the first year. So paying earnings with no beginning, zero. We always add in net income, which for me was 197000 Then we subtract out our cash dividends, which was 40000 which means we have 157000 in retained earnings a year in. Year in. Okay. Last bit of item is, of course, accumulated depreciation, which is 9000 as we already figured that out, from depreciation expense since it's the first year. Now we we'll get to fill in some blanks. First off, current liabilities, 102000 Common stock and retained earnings, add those two together. 475 plus 157 equals to 632,000. Okay. So 632,000 plus 102 is 734. What's funny is that we already know assets have to equal these. Now that also gives us this in the balance. We you know 45,000 minus 9,000 for depreciation. That gives us 36K. Now, here we go. We're going to work backwards to get cash. We didn't have to do all cash right here and copy nothing. We know we have to finish with 74000 so we'll start with that. Minus 36000 for fixed assets. This tells us current assets should be 698000 then subtract out the 314 for merchandise inventory, and then the 116,000 that we still have left for AR, cash should be 268,000. Lots of fun stuff. Check, we're good to go. Okay, there's the balance sheet. All right. 
Oh, next. Is our state of cash flows? Why don't you keep this? I don't know why I deleted it. Because there is certain items that we do look on here. So first is offering activities. Then we're going to start with net income, which is 197000 Appreciation. We always add that nine thousand. Now, accounts receivable and merchandise inventory. These are both increases. So since they're increases, do the opposite. We're going to subtract one hundred and sixteen thousand. Subtract the merchandise inventory of 314. Okay. Then we look at our current liabilities. We also have two. These are both increases. So increasing accounts payable, increasing salaries, but we actually add these back in. Hey, there we go. That's it. So find our total. Nine thousand minus one six. So we're looking at about negative three hundred nineteen thousand. We are not looking so good. So, 319000 So, cash provided by operating. And minus 19. We're looking at negative 122000 Okay. Check. We're good. Now investing, again, focus on fixed assets, which is only to store fixtures, and we actually paid out. So cash payment to acquire these was a negative 45000 Actually, I'll keep that in parentheses. That's actually it. Did not purchase anything else? So, 45000 Okay. Finance activities. We actually did some financing. First off, we received issuing from stock, 475000 We actually paid out dividends. So, oh, cash payment for dividends. Uh, 40000 Now, we do not take on any notes. No notes. No no other items, no long-term liability, don't have any. So that's basically it. So, 475,000 minus 40. Come out to 435,000. Check. Okay. So, net increase or decrease is basically we're going to take 435 minus 2, is it quick? It's 268,000. Okay. 
and cash balance beginning on zero. So all we had was two hundred sixteen thousand. Again, matches to the cash that happened. And that's it. That's all that's going on with this. Oh, mm, that's just bringing back some blasts of the past. Some older stuff that we did earlier in the semester to make sure you still remember how to make a balance sheet and an income statement. I like that one. Okay, last question. It looks like we're doing another cash flow. Okay. And we got two statements. So we got the comparative, which is really small. We're just giving us the current, that's cool. And some transactions during twenty eighteen. So that gives us a twenty eighteen. Okay. All right. We're going to use these two, if I can put them both on the screen. Yeah, there we go. Okay, again, start with net income, which is 63600 First thing we always attack is depreciation, which is 16600 There's no gains or losses. There's not being any there. So, again, we're going to do index our balance sheet. Decrease the accounts receivable. So that's 1500 minus 21600. So overall, we had a decrease of 6,600. Remember, this is an asset due to offices. Okay. Next is merchandise inventory. I like how they're not trying to trip you and have an increase in increase. It strictly tells you increase. That's fine. So, 6,800 minus 59,800, that's an increase of 4,000, that's a, an asset, we offset it, a decrease of 4 grand, excess of payables, so increase in accounts payable, those will actually work the same, so 31,100, minus 26,100, so we have an increase of 5 grand. Food liabilities actually decreased. By 1,600. So, keep it the same. There's all our numbers. All right. we'll, we'll come back to that. So I'm going to keep that up. So find our total. So we have a net basically change of operating activities of 22,600. So, the natural positive, that's good. So, add on our net income. Then we're looking at 86,200. Okay. Next is investing activities. We're looking up here. Again, looking for anything that's dealing with fixed assets. And see if it's dealing with cash. 
stuff here. We have there's cash right there. There's a building. We both know those are fixed assets. I don't see anything else going on. So, acquisition of building, acquisition of equipment, this felony. So, both of these are losses. Are basically cash outflows. So, calculator, that these two together, nothing that changes. We have a total outflow of 162. That's it. Okay, next, finance activity. I like to always do common stock first, just it's better to have it first. So, cash received from issuing common stock for me is uh, 1,111 right there. Then we need a payment of cash dividends. 22,200. Of course, that's cash going out, so that's a negative. Okay. Issuing of a long-term notes payable to borrow cash. Okay. So that's actually cash received from issuing a note payable. And cash is being moved of 50000 That's really it. Again. Hold out. $140,800. There we go. So now we find our increase. So, $8,600 minus one fifty two nine hundred. Plus 140, 100 equals a total of 64, 100. Okay, cash balance at the beginning. Again, always look at your prior year cash. 18,500. And if everything was right, it should come out. Calculator. 4100 plus 18500, 82600 comes out correctly. Okay. Then we have some fun little things here. So, now we count cash flow for the year. Mention three categories and give you a valuation. Complete the following statements. Operations are plus positive, so it's generating cash. Company is investing in new fine assets. Basically, that's what's going on. We've acquired. There is more financing by issuing stock and by borrowing. The comparative of stock and those payable. And cash increase during the year. Okay. For the reasons above, cash flows look strong. Because again, it's increase. Okay. Then it wants you to figure out cash flows. So again, that cash from operating activity Lines from plan assets, cash dividends. Okay, so I don't see any plan assets or cash dividends. We've already paid those. 
This one's a little bit interesting. Do we actually have any? Okay, let's go look. So 86,200. I don't see any more right. As for these items, so free cash flows is 200. Go to check. Okay. Maybe I just didn't read them. They're probably somewhere else. All right. I don't see anything that says these are planned. They're saying that they are. Okay. So, because it can't be these, then you're already acquiring these. So, let's look at requirements. Nothing there. I was still really using those. That makes sense. All right, let's see what they're using. Okay, so they actually did use these numbers. That's a little odd. Because it's already basically stated that they did pay for those. And they weren't planned. So. So for these, just go ahead and put in your cash dividends on here. Payment of dividends and payment of the fixed assets. Subtract them from your cash flows to 96900 Oh, okay. I didn't read it. Similar activity plans for 2019. That's just weird. To me, that's the weird problem at the end. But that's it. That's your homework. So, any questions over the homework? This Basically redoing the statement of cash flows over and over again. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and close that up.